Namaste and welcome to Asha USA's monthly speaker series. This year in 2024, our theme is Let's Start the Conversation. In this series, we will hear from different speakers who talk about issues important to us as immigrants and how we can deal with those issues. With me today is my friend, Dr. Ritu Seyal, who is an OBGYN practicing for over 20 years here in Minnesota. Welcome, Ritu, and thank you for being here again. Thank you for having me again for another important topic. Yes, and this is one of those topics which is very dear to my heart and I'm sure dear to uh, almost all women. So, uh, Ritu, we go through so many life changes that are unique to women. And one such thing is the menstrual cycle and the changes we experience with that as we age. And there are so many jokes that are told about, you know, women going through menopause and the havoc it creates on their bodies and minds. But jokes apart, we as women really have to face so many challenges. And right now, if you see the social media, it is exploding with information about menopause and how to deal with it. So I would love for you to speak about this. Uh, can you start by talking about what is menopause? So menopause is a life transition. So what happens is when you are born uh, as a female, you are born with a certain number of eggs. And those eggs just sit in your ovaries. They don't activate, nothing activates until you get your period. So average age of getting your period is around 12. Every culture is different. Um, some get it at nine, some get it at 15, 16, 17, uh, you know, probably not nine to 15 is normal. And that is when your uh, um, ovaries and your brain hormones, your female brain hormones activate and they start releasing an egg and they start releasing estrogen and progesterone and you get your period. And it goes from your brain to your ovaries, to your uterus, to your brain, your ovaries, your uterus, and it's all connected through your bloodstream. So all those hormones are connected through your bloodstream. That when you are born, you have a certain number of eggs. You don't reproduce eggs. So in men, it's very different. When they go through puberty, they reproduce sperm every three months forever. Hmm. The quality of the sperm decreases as they get older, but they're, it's continually churning out new sperm. In women, the eggs you are born with, that's it. There's no more. There's no remaking them. There, That is it. And at some point, there's a trigger that shuts down the ovaries and they stop producing estrogen and progesterone. And that is where you hit menopause. So the words we use are menarche, which is when you start getting your periods. And menopause is when you stop producing estrogen and progesterone and stop getting your period. So the definition, the strict definition is no period for one year. So no period consecutively for 12 months. And when you hit that 12 months, so let's pretend today you got your period and you didn't get a period and you just stopped in 12 months on March 14th, 2025, you would be considered in menopause. Hmm. And that is the definition. So what is happening is the ovary stopped producing estrogen and progesterone. Therefore, you stop getting a period. Hmm. So yeah, that was a very clear explanation. So we use terms like perimenopause, mm -hmm. menopause, and postmenopause, right? So mm -hmm. where do those fall? So perimenopause, peri means around the time of. So around the time of menopause can be, every everybody is different. So around two to four years before you meet the strict criteria. So perimenopause, a lot of people still are getting their periods but they're starting to have some changes that they're feeling or that they're getting hot flashes or vaginal dryness or decreased sex drive. So their, their body is going through that transition in different ways, but they're still getting their period. So the definition of menopause is no period for a year. So if you're still getting your period, 
yet you're having those issues, we consider that perimenopause. There are certain people, um, for example, a big one is people who smoke. Um, smoking kills your estrogen. Those people tend to go through menopause earlier than the rest of everybody else. So when I have a, a normal person coming in at age 47, 48, telling me, oh my gosh, I have hot flashes. I'm like, yep, you, you're in perimenopause. Um, but if a normal person does who doesn't smoke comes in at age 42 and says that, I'd be like, no, no, that's not right. But somebody who smokes and they come in at 42 and say, I'm having these issues, people who smoke tend to go through menopause earlier. Hmm. Um, menopause is just that. You are no period for one year. And postmenopause basically is the same thing. You are now in menopause. And one thing that I think confuses people is they think they can get out of menopause. Once you are in menopause, you are always in menopause. There is no going back. So mm. the word menopause and postmenopause kind of are the same thing. You're mm. either in it or you're not. Mm. I am menopausal or I am postmenopausal. It's still the same thing. So mm -hmm. we kind of use those words interchangeably. Mm. And uh, we will definitely look into uh what people experience, what women experience when they are in those stages. But, you know, one question is that, are we talking about it more or is it a bigger problem now than before? Because uh, we didn't see our mothers and grandmothers talking about it so much, but now in our generation, there's so much talk about menopause and what women go through. So is it something new? So it's not new, but how did we get to this point? We're we're in a place right now where we consider menopause, we're talking about menopause as if it's a disease, as we're starting to medicalize menopause, which I think is so wrong. Um, you, when you are in menopause or going through menopause, you don't have a disease. It's mm -hmm. normal. You don't have something that needs medical treatment. It's not cancer, it's not heart disease, it's not diabetes. You don't need a treatment for it. Yes, you are having issues which suck, which are horrible sometimes, but it's not a medical disease. And we are turning this into a medical disease and we are medicalizing menopause. So the question is, how did we get here? Why are we at this situation where we are treating menopause like it's something that has to be treated and there's something wrong with you? Hmm. And this widespread misunderstanding can be, it's a couple factors, right? The first thing is this recent emergent, uh, emergence of menopause as a common stage in women's lives in human history. So because of technology and because of um, medical interventions, we are living longer. So a thousand years ago, we lived till the age of 50 or whatever the, you know, the average lifespan was. People died before they got into menopause. Yeah. So you have to think of menopause as a very recent, uh, where, where it hits the mass world, um, is a very recent phenomenon because we didn't live until we got to menopause. We were dead before we got to menopause. And now we are living longer because of medicine and because of technology. Um, we are living a lot longer. And so we are experiencing it more and we're experiencing it as an aggregate whole. So the historical context is very, very important. The second thing that we are in a time frame today where we are obsessed with youth. Mm. We are absolutely obsessed with looking younger, feeling younger. And the last thing anybody today wants to do is grow old. And it's we're treating aging as something that we should fight against. And um, that is a cultural phenomenon across the world. So what do you think is happening in menopause? You're getting older. So we are fighting that so hard by trying to be more youthful. The third thing is that women in the age that you're going through menopause, you're a lot more financially stable at age 50 than you were when you were at 20, 25, 30. You have a lot of money. There is a mass uh, movement targeting women in this age group. You have a lot of money to spend. Your kids are grown. You've got extra cash. I'm going to go spend it on menopause treatments. I don't know what those menopause treatments are, but there's a huge push to tell you there's something wrong with you. Go figure it out. And here's a treatment I can give you for $10,000 or $5,000. And 
there's all these companies going on where you can go in and get swabs of this and swabs of that and pay $5,000 to figure out that you're in menopause and that there's something wrong with you. And then you spend $5,000 for some random treatment to fix a problem you really don't have. And those three things are happening right now simultaneously. Number one, the historical context, we live longer. Number two, um, we are obsessed with youth. We uh, are fighting aging, which is completely wrong and absurd. And number three, we are in an environment where we are pretending or telling people that menopause is a disease that needs to be treated. Hmm. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And uh, having right now going through some of the perimenopausal symptoms, I feel, and you you, uh, you said the word transition and not to use the word symptom, right? Because it's not a disease. So if we are just getting older and that is why we are experiencing all these transitions. So how do we deal with it? Like, for example, I get joint pain and people have told me that's because of menopause, right? Uh, because there is change in hormones. So how do I deal with that when I get these just aging symptoms? Let me call it that aging transitions, what you want mm -hmm. to call it. Okay. So do, to, I take, um... do I take uh, supplements? Do I exercise more or less? Do I reduce mm -hmm. weight? You know, these are some of the solutions that are suggested to deal with the symptoms. So the key to understanding menopause is that it's to, it's your estrogen and your progesterone that are going down. And estrogen, in my opinion, as I've watched people grown older, estrogen is the feel good drug. It's, it is the drug of choice for women to feel healthy. They feel so good when they have estrogen in their body. And you can tell because uh, in, a, in a woman who's still menstruating, um, her estrogen, if she has a, a cycle here and then here, right, in between is when her estrogen is the highest. She's the happiest person on earth. She feels good. She's sleeping well. Everything is great. Uh, she's happy until her hormones plummet. So estrogen is kind of the feel good hormone. Progesterone, on the other hand, is the hormone that makes you resilient. Hmm. So resilient means that if anything is happening, you can say, oh, I'm fine. Or you can you can really tolerate a lot more. And, and you notice that in, in the women's cycle again, because if this is your period and this is your period, your, your progesterone plummets right, right around the time you're about to bleed. Mm -hmm. And people call it PMS, whatever you want to call it. Um, your resilience is just, you don't have the resilience to tolerate a lot of things. So there's more irritability. You cry more, you're sad more, you don't understand what's wrong with you. But think of it as progesterone as the resilient hormone makes you resilient. Mm -hmm. Estrogen makes you feel really good. The world is great. You're happy. Everything's great. Your sex drive is high. You feel really good with estrogen. Progesterone, on the other hand, is you're resilient. Bad things happen. Good things happen. You're just more resilient to what's happening. Now think about taking that away when your ovaries are done producing estrogen and progesterone, how you feel. So take those away. And that is where you get to a point where you start having symptoms. So some of the most common symptoms of menopause are going to be hot flashes. So the reason is always go back to estrogen and progesterone. What are they doing to make you feel this way? Estrogen is related to your thermal regulation in your brain mm. and your heat tolerance index or whatever you want to call it. Estrogen is related to your uh, thermal regulation in the brain. Take that away. What happens? You get hot, you get sweaty. Okay. Estrogen did that. Another symptom is vaginal dryness. The vagina loves estrogen and it gets moist with estrogen. And when you take that away, what happens to the vagina? It gets dry. Um, sleep disturbance, same thing. Estrogen and the brain regulation helps with sleep. Take away estrogen, sleep disturbance. Um, now, uh, mood swings and mental health. Remember how I said progesterone is your resilient drug or your resilient hormone? Take that away. What do you think is going to happen? Your moods and your ability to be resilient to life changes is less. You, you, you have more sadness or depression. It is a normal process, right? 
because mm-hmm. we're taking the progesterone away. Um, you have uh, the, the one thing that I, the decreased sex drive is very common. Um, and that has to, that for women is, um, sex drive is not like for men. For men, it is a, um, a blood flow issue. Mm-hmm. For women, it is so much more complicated. For women, it is hormones. It is how much sleep did you get? How do you feel that day? How have you been doing that month? What is your stress level? Um, it, for women, it's not one easy answer. Sex drive is very, very, very complicated for women. Um, and so when it comes to hormones, um, estrogen does not do anything for your sex drive. Progesterone doesn't do anything for your sex drive. Testosterone is the only thing. And your ovaries produce a very little amount of testosterone. Um, so that has a little bit to do with it, but we are very reluctant to just give women testosterone because it's a male hormone can cause so many other problems that you don't want. Um, we've tried that for years, trying to put estrogen and progesterone and testosterone in a pill to help. And it, it's not, it, a pill can't help your sex drive is what I'm trying to say. It's a very complicated process, but hormones do play a role in it. So those are the symptoms. Some women get one symptom. Some women get every single one of them. Mm. So you always have to go back to, well, how is estrogen and progesterone working to cause that issue? So joint pain is one that people come in and say, I think my joint pain is from menopause. There is no connection between estrogen, progesterone with joints, but there is a connection between getting older and damage to your joints for what you did when you were younger. Um, There is that we do gain weight as we get older. So you could start putting together um, aging process as causing joint pain. So what's happening is people are coming in and saying, I'm having all these symptoms. It must be menopause. Give me hormones. Mm. And it doesn't necessarily work that way. The way that I try to explain it is I, when my patients come in and say, I have this, 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 I go through each one of them in my head and think, okay, how is estrogen and progesterone doing that? And is it, and a lot of times estrogen and progesterone have nothing to do with it. A lot of times they do, but a lot of times the, just the symptoms of aging or the transitions of aging have nothing to do with your estrogen and progesterone. And it's very hard for people to hear because they want to feel better. They don't want to have these issues they want to feel better. Um, so you always have to go back to the issue you're having. Is estrogen and progesterone involved with it? Or is it just a natural aging process? And um, um, it's harder. Joint pain is a great one for somebody uh, to lose weight or to go uh, exercise or to do whatever than to just blame it on menopause and say that that must be why I'm having mm. this. Yeah. That that absolutely has to be why, it, and and you need to fix it. So, it, it's the human psyche; it's how we are. Um, right. um, but I think I'm more trying to say that you you have to look at what is happening to your body, and how is estrogen and progesterone is it even involved? And a lot of times, it's not. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a very clear understanding of the physical and the emotional changes that occur. And uh, thank you so much. It feels so much like mathematics. Once you understand where things are and how things work together, it's easy to understand. Um, This was very informational, very useful. And I also want to tell our audience that uh, Ritu has recently launched uh, an app called the Red Tent Community, and uh, you can download it on um, your app stores. And it is where she talks about or, or she uh, has um, uh, things which will help all women's health related issues. And in the last uh, session that we had with Ritu, she talked in detail about this app and how we can use this app irrespective of what your age is. You can uh, connect with the Red Tent community, download the app, visit their website and get all the information. So Ritu, thank you so much. 
for enlightening us, uh, I would like to say, because, you know, uh, we really need to treat these things as more like aging and natural processes that happen with aging and not make a big deal out of it and especially not try to intervene with additional hormones and things that might actually harm the body than be useful. So uh, I'm sure you would say maintaining a a uh, healthy lifestyle, eating right, exercising, and keeping a positive outlook are the actual uh, medicines to deal with this stage of menopause, right? I wholeheartedly agree, but there are some things that absolutely hormones will help, 100%. Um, like I said, um, if you're having hot flashes and sleeping problems, and for some people, mood is a big deal. So hormones will help with all of that. Um, but you have to talk to your doctor to make sure that that's right for you. Mm. So I'm, I'm a huge advocate for hormone placement therapy, um, mm. but it has to be for the right reasons. Mm. Um, and it, it, there are a lot of women who struggle and suffer as they get older because they lack estrogen and, or just estrogen itself. Um, and hormones absolutely help them. Mm. Um, but the example of the joint pain, estrogen ain't going to do anything for you. Mm. But there are a lot of situations where it will definitely help. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, like I said, hot flashes, uh, it will help with vaginal dryness, but there's also vaginal estrogen. It sometimes helps with mood and sleep, uh, but absolutely it has to be highly individualized. I, I prescribe hormone placement therapy often, mm. um, um, but I also have to go through what are the problems you're having and is estrogen and progesterone going to actually help you? Mm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, I'm really grateful uh, for all the work that you've been doing. And we would definitely like to have you back and talk about other important topics related to women's health. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.